Hello, it's your lovely nurse again with the brain stuff. Hi. Um, so I just wanted to take y'all down a rabbit hole just a little bit, but I also wanted to show you just so I'm not sitting here on Facebook being or YouTube or all those things. Being one of those people is like, oh yeah, I'm this and that and not having the actual accreditation. I, I just wanted to show you guys like, yes, I am an actual nurse. I do actual research. So here, I, I, I want to make sure I show you guys these things. Okay, look right here. Ta -da! Okay. I, I get I, I have a bachelor degree. I I have honors. Okay. Like I did exceptionally well despite dealing with the brain stuff the entire time I was in school. I mean I don't know if y'all see the date on this. If you look real close, it was March. Eighteenth day of March. I don't know if you can see that. Okay. In in twenty twenty. Now, I've been dealing with this stuff from, you know, the middle of 18 until now. So the entire time I was in school, kind of back and forth, I had to deal with it. And, you know, still trying to work as a nurse. So, I mean, let's let's get into some of the research stuff, though, okay? Chase me down this fun rabbit hole. It, and it's fun being, you know, the subject of my own research projects, right? Oh, eh. What's going on out there? I'm not going to go out there. All right. So I did a couple of things that I saw along the way for my research projects and all. Um, one that was kind of scary because here I am, you know, looking up idiopathic intracranial hypertension and seeing what's going to happen and, you know, outcomes and, and prognosis and things like that. And, you know, what's wrong with me? What the hell is going on? Oh, my gosh. You know, what's... Is there anything that I could do to make myself better? And, and you know, what might happen? Sorry, loud noises. I needed more light. And anyways. So, I do find an interesting article in the uh, Clinical Neurology and Neurosurgery. If you go to uh, 2019, it's 186. Uh, let's find it. I will put the DOI number. All right? It will be in there. Um, let me show you the lovely pages. See if you can get all those might be backwards. Sorry. I need to do the forward facing cameras on these. But anyways, um, gosh, I can't pronounce these guys' names. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, y'all. But the DOI number will be in there as again, it, it's on the Sylvia if you guys need to go in there. But the, uh, the, the lovely, the lovely, oh gosh, okay. Psychiatric disorders are a common prognostic marker for worse outcome in patients with idiopathic intracranial hypertension. Yikes. Um, okay. So in other words, if I'm having a bad time and, and, and if, if I'm getting like really depressed and scared and, and you know, if I go all psycho nutty, while I'm sick with this, that could be a sign that it, it means it's going to get real bad. Great, because I'm already a little off anyways. Okay, so it talks about what it is and uh, how, it, how it's a rare disease. Uh, incidence of 0.5 to 2 per 100,000 per year. So it is rare. Uh, whereas in the pediatric population, it, 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 it says lots, lots of numbers, you know, because it's, you know, research. Uh, they did a study and a cohort, and they tried to find people that had, in this rare disease, psychiatric disorders and IAH. <sighs> it was a retrospective study, and uh, they, they looked at people who had IIH and, and relative medical charts operative reports, lab studies, imaging findings, and clinical follow-up evaluations. Uh, they looked up until 2019. Um, they excluded pediatric patients under 16. They excluded IH cases caused by a sinus thrombosis and two that were not true. And they included 51 adult patients with IIH. So they found 51 adults with IIH for this study. 
And they did find papilledema in all patients at the time of diagnosis. And here's the thing. Everybody wants this papilledema. Everybody. Every single doctor I went to. Oh, do you have papilledema? Do you have papilledema? Do you have papilledema? Is your optic nerve squishing into your eyeball? No. No, honey. My, my optic nerve is not squishing into my eyeballs. Okay? Everything else is happening. Just, just not that. Just not that. Because, I don't know. Because my blood pressure usually runs 100 over 50. And I'm healthy. And I'm a runner, and I and and I go to the gym all the time, and and I eat great. I I don't have plaques all over my my vascular system. I did. What do you want from me? Anyways. So, uh, they got down to their N fifty one. So they had twenty three with comorbid comorbid psychiatric disorders, and twenty eight with no psychiatric disorders. So they had a pretty even spread, right? Like, you know, 23 versus 28. So that was their, their flow chart of their inclusion versus exclusion. They ended up with, you know, they started with uh, 65 diagnosed patients. They excluded those ones that we talked about. And then they ended up with uh, 51. Uh, and then they go down to, you know, the mental and behavioral disorders due to psychoactive substance use. Do, 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 do. Schizophrenia, delusional, other non-mood psychotic disorders. Well, then they came down here with uh, psychiatric diagnoses. <sighs> they had one that had suicidal ideations, two that had personality disorders, one with a panic disorder, one with mixed obsessional thoughts and acts, one with adjustment disorder with anxiety, one with disassociation disorder, one with bipolar two disorder, 19 reporting major depressive disorders. 19. Wonder why. You know, oh, here I have chocolate. Blah. Sorry. 19. 19 reporting major depressive disorders. Okay. Um. Yeah. I, I can understand that. When you hurt really, really bad all day, every day, and, and, and people are like, oh, how many days a, a month do you have a migraine? It, 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 oh, you don't have papillary edema, so you must not have this. You, you, you get kind of depressed. Or when you just can't do anything that you're used to doing, because it just hurts. You can't work, you can't clean, you can't enjoy anything any of the things that you're used to enjoying. I can see why 19 out of the 51 people that they had reported depressive disorders. I get it. Anyhow, let's move on. Uh, treatment and outcomes after treatment. Well, they used Diamox in almost all of their patients. Uh, 97.9. Uh, reported beneficial in uh, 20 of their patients. Uh, partial recovery noted in 19 patients. All uh, patients with no psych. Okay, so the patients with no psychiatric disorders had better clinical outcomes after the Diamox, as compared to the patients with pre-existing psychiatric diagnosis. Okay, so I guess they're talking about people who were depressed before they had the IIH. I mean, if you're already depressed and then you get this. <laughs> yeah. Dang. Surgical intervention required for 16 patients. <laughs> uh, CSF diversion was conducted in 13, of which 10 were lumboperitoneal. Ugh. And three were ventriculoperitoneal. Like me. Yours truly. That's that's what they did with me. The, the lumbar one is where they put you, the thing in your spine. Not fun. Uh, the gastric bypass surgery was done in three patients because they're overweight. And 26 patients reported themselves to be symptomless. Oh, after conservative and operative treatments, the overt outcome improved slightly. 26 patients reported themselves to be symptomless. In the group of patients with pre existing psychiatric disorders, the outcomes were significantly worse as compared to patients with such history. Oh, no, this is terrible. 
this is such a this is such a small group. Really? And they peer-reviewed this. They peer, they peer reviewed this. It's like 26 people. We analyzed the prevalence and type of psychiatric disorders in patients with IIH. Found that 45% of the patients with IIH displayed pre existing psychiatric comorbidities. The most common was major depressive disorder. Found in 37% of cases, patients with IIH and pre existing psychiatric disorder did not differ. From those with no prior, this is this is such a small amount of people, though. I mean, they did this huge, this huge thing. But it's like it's fifty people. So that's not a lot of people, honey. I mean, I love y'all. Wow. And I mean, they they got a lot of nice, beautiful. Look, look at all the, look at all the nice stories, right? They got look, look at all those beautiful charts and graphs. And I mean, they really went into. It's like fifty people. That's just not, when you're talking like psychiatric disorders and things, all right, people, that's, that's not, that's not a lot. It's not. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all just, yeah. Okay. I mean, they did good though. I mean, they really were looking hard for some sort of link between psychiatric disorders and how well you're going to do uh, after being diagnosed with this. But I can tell you one thing. If you didn't already feel depressed, then you're probably going to be depressed. Because all of the things that you found joyful and then having to go throughout day after day after day. Not only trying to convince people that there's something wrong with you and then convince them that, that certain things aren't helping and you need to do something else and then this isn't helping and then you need to do something else. I mean, it's not like it's an overnight easy fix. Hardly anything ever is. Okay? And then if you already were depressed which already slows down your, your motivation for seeking help and going to the doctor and saying hey, this isn't working. Hey, I need more help with this. Hey, I, you know, it, it, this isn't the correct thing for me. Maybe can you try something else? People who are already feeling depressed, who already don't have that motivation to even get up in the morning and want to go do things. And then on top of that, you have that pain. And on top of that, you have people not even believing you that you have a problem. Oh, it's just a headache. Oh, well, that's how migraines do. Yeah, they're not going to do so well because they're not even going to want to go ask for the help. They're going to get frustrated. They're going to get frustrated. Yeah, if you already have a psychiatric issue, okay, if you already have a psychiatric disorder and then you get diagnosed with a, with a, a rare disease that you're trying to convince a physician that you have, yeah, yeah you're not gonna do so well. It, but but thank you for studying 50 people, I guess. But anyways, I'm, I'm gonna put the, the DOI, in, uh, D, DOI, I'm gonna put the DOI in, in that one, um, y'all. But I mean, but they did good. They, they really did look back through everything. And I mean, they looked at the body mass indexes, which is huge. Like, that's been a huge thing with, with intracranial hypertension, okay, is, is body mass index. Like, they're looking at white females who are overweight and have hypertension. That's just been this big thing. And do you have papillary edema? Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> People. And, and it's, it's been this big thing. So, uh, thank you for chasing me down this section of the rabbit hole. There's another one coming up. But um, we're just going to go one at a time. Just to see y'all can take it all in. <laughs> a little bit of chocolate because like, I was eating chocolate earlier. It was yummy. Um, but yeah, that, that was a really small group. It was a really small group. And it was like a retroactive study. So it's like, oh, hey, let's, let's look through all the patient charts afterwards and find how it went. Instead of let's gather up a whole bunch of people in the beginning and follow them and see how it goes. Which I would love to see that kind of a study. Like, let's identify a bunch of people in the beginning 
and 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 then follow them and see how it goes and not even let their doctors know that we're following them and, and see like how well their doctors are able to even you know identify them and 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 how well they're treated and and you know how well they're followed and how e- easily dismayed they get or frustrated they get when it takes you know six months to get into a neurologist <laughs> you know <laughs> When it takes six months to get into a neurologist, are they going to give up if they're already depressed? Because you're not looking at that when you're looking back on charts. So if, if you start in the beginning and, and somebody who's already depressed and then you look forward, you know, it, you can get a different kind of result. So anyways, uh, look in the... Uh, Look in the uh, comments or the description, and I'm going to put the uh, the DOI and and what other you know the information about the uh, the 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 journal. It's from uh, Science Direct, I think. And uh, yeah, I would love to discuss this in the comments. I absolutely would love to discuss this in the comments. And and there's more coming up. There's more coming up. The 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 next one. It's. These guys are amazing. The next one's amazing too. But these guys are great. Like, I, I just love the fact that they all like sit down and put their heads together and look through these things and try to make that link, you know? Um, but I, I think they kind of shot a little sideways, but I just I love how much detail they went into. And, and you know, you look at the detail of the research and it's just beautiful. It, it, it really is. So anyhow, keep chasing me down the rabbit hole. All right. Thanks y'all.